text to you. All right, so first off, good morning. Um, I greeted a bunch of y'all, but I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna meet everybody. I appreciate y'all coming, spending y'all time with me, and I just took some time out for y'all too. So today is cost me a couple thousand dollars to be here inside from what I spent. All right, y'all, so thanks to everybody for coming. I'm going to go through all of this stuff. It's three phases in trucking. The company driver, owner, operator, have you on the thought. The first phase as a company driver, that's where you're going to start out at. That's where you're at right now. You shouldn't do that no longer than a year, right? You save two to $300 a week for a year. That's going to allow you to get into the owner-operator phase. Owner-operators own trucks. They don't own trucking companies. The owner-operator leases their truck to a trucking company that they work for. They insure the truck. They don't insure the freight. Then you get your own authority, which is where I'm trying to get all y'all to. Sometimes that's the best option. Sometimes it's not, depending on how much your insurance costs. So we're going to go over that. And also on your lifestyle, uh, whether you got family, wife, kids, and all of that stuff. Um, but before we get into that, it's a give and take. So I'm going to be giving to y'all, but y'all going to be giving back as well in the form of your time, information, and resources to each other. So if everybody can just say who they is, what's your occupation, and where you're from, and how you found out about the day, that would be very whatever. All right, my name is Rob. Uh, my occupation, I'm a CDO, a driver, um, formerly owner, um, owner of myself. Um, learned about this through Instagram, um, followed me for a little while. Um, anything else, haven't I? Where are you from? I'm sorry, Brady, man. I'm raised in Baltimore, man. Um, you're from East Baltimore. Hold on. What kind of job you do again? You drive. CDL. Okay. I'm from East Baltimore. Right now, I drive for uh, PFG, so I do more touch free. It's hella high water, I swear to God it is. I just got out the phase, just did 20 years flat. So, um. Give a round of applause for that. He just came on. So, if anybody saw the video I did a couple of weeks ago when I was in the road, when I was saying, people don't understand what exactly it is that I do. I'm not here for everybody. So, I'm here for people like him. I'm here for. The guy that's in the joint, here in the feds, got some money, don't know what to do, but he got some little cousins at home. I deal with a lot of people in the joint. I'm here for people who just came home trying to figure out what to do, because if they don't figure out what to do, they're going back. I'm here for dancers that's dealing with money, and they on a hamster wheel. Go to work, dance, buy clothes, lash his head. Don't do nothing with the money. Get in the truck, and I'm here for prostitutes who May got a pimp. I understand we're in Baltimore. That's not the culture here. But when you get outside of Baltimore, it, it's a big thing. And people giving people money, and they ain't doing nothing but buying lizard skins. And got a closet for the clothes, but they ain't got no exit plan, no business, or nothing. You're still living in motels, not even hotels. So this is something you could do with your money. Go ahead, finish. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, sometimes I, I drive. I say sometimes I drive B trucks. So other than that, I'm looking for something else right now. But I'm trying to grind for the whole year. I got six months of experience right now. So let's talk about that. All right, great. Name, where you from? Your job? How you found out about it? My name is Jason. I'm a 
came out on Paul Heights. Um, I came home 2012 and I started doing the CL in 2016. And um, ever since then, I kind of got been freelance, just getting experience with different trucks and working for different companies. But I just feel like, you know, I could do it myself. So that's why. Um, I'm great. Hotels. Uh, I love, uh, I'm from Hotel. West Baltimore. Huh? Hotel. Uh, Marriott. Okay, we gotta get that discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, from, I'm originally from um, West Baltimore, Yale Heights. I love East Baltimore now. I heard you threw out Instagram. We shot East Baltimore. Uh, occupation, I drive trucks. Driving for 10 roads right now, dealing with mail. I've been following you on Instagram for like a couple of years, so that's how I found out about what I was found out about my man told me for real, so. Okay, so I teach one, teach one. Mm -hmm. Daniel, I'm on lead, lead, um, head lead general in uh, LA Fitness. And I'm from, originally I used to live in Philadelphia, but I'm, I'm from Baltimore, East Baltimore. Okay. Uh, my name is Sean Day, um, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Just moved out here, got married uh, a couple months ago. Uh, owner operator, um, I got my truck leased on to Baltimore International around the corner, and uh, my co workers uh, sitting over at the table told me about it. Okay, so you're on phase two, that's good. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Avery. Uh, I'm from uh, Baltimore as well. Uh, currently, um, I just got into uh, driving trucks, uh, class A. Um, I work for uh, my frat brother. He got his own truck. What for time do you? Um, cat ball for time. Hey, you know? do your thing. Get <laughs> 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 your car. Yeah. So, um, I got, I just got my license in October. Um, I'm coming from like teaching and uh, just business marketing. Um, what kind of business marketing? Pretty much anything, really. Like everything got to be sold. So that's kind of just what I did. Just Basic, basic answer that question like uh, a company that help other businesses advertise themselves. Right. So I told y'all before we started that I was going to explain something to y'all. Now I know y'all see a lot of gurus and people that's teaching all that type of stuff online. I call that the self help chitlin circuit. So what they do is they come gain your attention, right? <laughs> Then they gain you as a follower. <clears throat> then they keep pumping information to you, but they never really tell you anything. They tell you everything and nothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then they sell you the information, mm -hmm. right? Now, it's, I grew up in NAAA, so they got a saying, <clears throat> it works if you work it. All of that stuff has some good information in there, but you got to piece it from here to here to here to here. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on my education. The real benefit to that stuff is coming to places in person and the people that you meet because there's only a certain type of person that's going to come to a live event. You either trying to go somewhere, either you're going somewhere, or you're already there trying to get further. So all of y'all are interested in improving our lives and specifically in the area of trucking. So this is a, a rich networking field for y'all. And y'all remember y'all faces and exchange information. But just to demonstrate, you're in business marketing, right? I spent, I don't even want to tell y'all how much money I spent in advertising. Once upon a time, I was spending the, up to $900 a week for weeks. I've been advertising since 2018. Your skill can be a benefit to me and help me benefit y'all. I was an IT guy. That's a skill. Now, suppose somebody else in here needed IT skills or business marketing. Y'all can reach out to these guys. Suppose you're in a hotel situation somewhere, and so on and so forth. Everybody here got a lifetime of experiences and connections where y'all can benefit each other. So remember y'all faces and exchange information because the only true benefit to coming to events like this is the networking. They sell y'all all of this stuff. It's nothing in any of these programs 
bar nothing that you can't get for free by going to Google. The only thing they did was put it in an organized manner. They marketed it correctly. They put it on the internet. And they sold it to y'all. And I'm breaking that because they say you, you need to be the change that you want to see. So I'm bringing y'all information for free so y'all don't have to spend a decade plus and tens of thousands of dollars on books, courses, and seminars. Y'all got it all for free. So go ahead and continue. I just wanted to, well, I need y'all to understand that because I've been around the circuit for a minute. And I started in prison. And I was in the library, I seen a book called Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun by Reginald Lewis. Then when I found out he was the first black billionaire and that he was also from Baltimore and that he lived on Dallas Street, which is right behind Caroline Street where I used to live once upon a time. And he went to Dunbar, it got me interested. And that's what sparked my self-help journey uh, as far as self-help. Then I was given, the, um, I was tricked to go to a meeting sort of like this, but it was in prison, and they told us they had unlimited cookies and coffee, homemade. And you know that's a commodity in the joint. So I went, and they gave us a Bible that had a one-year study program, and I sat and read the whole entire Bible from cover to cover. So it was those two uh, things that sparked my self-help journey, which led me here. And all the stuff that I've done in between, I could give a goddamn about a party. Okay, I like to travel. And I like clothes, and I like to eat. But I don't really have no interest in showing y'all. I did all that to lure y'all here, because that's what people went to today. So congratulate y'all selves for being here. Y'all fell for the trick, and I'm going to give y'all the information for free, so it'll save y'all thousands of dollars. So um, I stepped away from uh, just the marketing thing, teaching, and uh, Along with that, going through college, I, I had odd jobs where I would drive around, but I was still selling stuff. So I was like, I, since I've been driving, I need to level it up. And it's um, just, just been a struggle. So, you know, um, I seen uh, B. Phillips on Instagram. Um, can't remember how I got connected to him, but then, you know, just watch his progression. And I was like, man, I can do it, you know. And um, I just watched my progression, looking at schools, going to schools, completing schools. I've been driving since 2014. I've been through a little bit of everything, always a guest. I was tired of working for people, so I stepped out, um, got my own business. I'm an owner operator. We run together, Baltimore International, running our trucks under that, our trucks under them. From um, I met you, King's Truck, and my brother. Shout out to him. He introduced me to you. Follow me on Instagram. I'm a fan. I watch you every day. You've been inspired, and thank you. I was looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> thank you. Well, you're not a fan. You, you family. So. I, I, I tell people, don't follow me, join me. Because it, it, I appreciate that, but it's not about that. So, like I was telling the brother earlier, in the beginning, I was asking people, did you call me? And um, most people were saying that they knew me from online. But what I was trying to express is, that's just to capture people. That's all. What matters is that you have my phone because every single person that has ever called me I saved that number. And I know when y'all calling me, what you calling about. It may be a mechanical issue. It may be a finance issue. You may need somebody to walk. It, it could be any, a variety of things. You can call me for all different types of things. But that that's the way that I keep track of everybody. So I know who you are and what I'm sending to you. And and this is, a, this, this is not a... Click a button and look at yo. This is all. It's people I've been dealing with for years that just call from time to time that get stuck in the jam and need something. And if I don't know it, I say it, or I'll find somebody uh, or a resource that can help you. But the majority of the stuff I've been through, so I can guide people through the processes. And also, trucking is not complicated in the sense that it's simple. But it's not easy, and 
The reason why it's not easy is because maintenance is where the break your spirit. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, no fish. Yeah, when you finish, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. I'm calling out from uh, Northeast Baltimore. I am in trucking for the last 20 something years. I have a, we got a veteran. I have a straight truck and a track. I just bought my straight my tractor in June. And I'm kind of here just to master, make sure I don't miss anything, and uh, kind of meet some good people. Right. So the meeting good things, that's the whole point of events like this. I'm yeah. telling you, if, if y'all ever see an event marketed, the benefit is the people that you're going to meet when you get there. I remember I took a master P master class in New York, and they made us all stand up and walk around the room and shake people's hands and exchange information. That was a part of the course. But they were trying to explain something to us. Um, you get further in life based off of people that you know more than what you have. I, I remember I was going for a job one time and I had lost my first set of trucks and I filed bankruptcy and I had to work because if I had kept independent, then they had to track the money down and try to take it. So I go in there and put the application in the leave. No sooner than I left, somebody went in there, took my application, slammed it on the dude's desk, like, you gonna hire him. Mind you, I didn't even know this fella. But they, this is before what y'all seeing now, but they was watching me in service and seeing me come week after week because that was my wrestling play. That's how I stayed out of, out of bullshit when I came home. The more free time you had, the more time you got to get into dumb shit. So it's good to stay working, stay in the gym, stay with your, your wife, your kids, your girl, your family. And if you ain't doing nothing else, uh, the library, they don't go to them no more, but books. I mean, you sit down and read for an hour, you go to the gym for an hour, you don't work eight hours, it'll take you two hours to get there, you know, eight, three times. Before you know it, you're too tired to get into dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of stuff, and you can attest to this. What's the, what they say, do your time, don't let it do you, right? What did that mean? Get a program going. Find your personal program. Your buddies you want to work out with. You get in, whether you're into the Mars, church, whatever you're into. Stay busy. So the problem is, people get out, and then they lose that program. And one, go around the way, kick it. The next thing you know, you jammed up. So if, if if you continue doing what you were doing in the joint when you get home, it it'll prison is is it's not, but it's supposed to be a rehabilitation process. And if you continue to work out, you continue to go to your religious services, you continue to read books and stay productive when you get home. Things that go a lot smoother, but people get in there, they become brother acts, and talk all this slick shit on the phone, and then they come home and go back right to the dumb shit, and then you locked up. Then you call them home telling everybody how it wasn't you, but they found it in your pocket. And you want your family to put up money to get you out of jail because you don't have no money. Because the streets is dead and you wasn't making nothing in the first place. That's just an excuse for you not to go to work. So these I don't get these young guys, but I can't be hypocritical because they didn't get us either. They didn't understand our big black tees. So, next. My name is Kayla. I'm from East Baltimore. How y'all doing? How you doing? Hand in the microphone, y'all put them right on the spot. <laughs> no, no. You like the pork? I do. It's hectic, but it gets the job done. It keeps me home every day. You off on the weekend. <laughs> That's what the pork does. I did the pork my first six years when I came home. I was on parole, and then I was on this uh, this boxes violence prevention unit. I couldn't go on the road, but she did it the right way. 
Because the only way you really going to learn how to really, really drive is to get out yeah. there and drive. Yeah. School will teach you, you, know, you, know, you, you to pass the test. Situations. Right. And that's how you learn. Take your mask down. My Please. name is Eureka Henderson. I'm originally from the Eastern Shore, but I moved to Baltimore about 20 years ago. I work in accounting, construction accounting, and I found out about you from, okay, my daughter, she's been struggling with some things. She um, got her CDL, and I figured it would be good for me to support her by maybe um, starting a business with her. So I decided that I wanted to get my CDL so we could, you know, partner together. And um, when I was in school, I'm sorry, CDL, when I was in school, I met a young lady that you had, um, she, when you were doing the trucking, her name is Mika. Yeah, I was trying to write out that. Yeah, I met her, and through her, she um, introduced me to you on Instagram. So I've been following you on Instagram. Okay, awesome. So that's another thing, well, one thing, Directly to you than one of y'all. Do you understand how related construction and trucking is? No. Well, trucking was, uh, construction was the old thing. Everybody was opening construction companies, independent people want to buy and flip houses, do all that. Trucking is the new thing people, for brothers. You know, everybody wants to be in the trucking now. But your accounting skills, just like his business marketing skills, just like his IT skills, is a whole nother source of uh, revenue because, like right now, people filing taxes. You know how many people calling me, man, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? I made all this money, and they need to get their taxes right. So that's another benefit to y'all. If, I'm not pushing this on you, but if you was up to do that, that would be another resource for y'all. So are y'all understanding how the importance of being in the room at these type of events is the real benefit and not the information. <coughs> Y'all can watch this, <coughs> this online, but you can't meet these people online. But thank you. And you did a, a good thing by getting your CDL because that's what I'm going to hammer into over here. Shit, nobody on the truck without having a CDL. I don't care what they sell y'all about buying a truck, getting a drive, and land back. That's not how it goes. Drivers are at a high turnover rate. I came home in 2010, there was a driver shortage then. They still talking about it. And even the people who are myth breaking in information saying it's not a driver shortage, they still can't refute that it's a um, high turnover business. If you look up the American Trucking Association driver shortage uh, paper that they wrote, you know, they talking about 80,000 drivers needed a year. And this is coming from a leading authority in the field. This is not hearsay. This is not some guy who has been trucking and talking to his trucking buddies. This is real research through census and, and studies. And this is what's happening. And it's coming from somebody who owned 19, 20 trucks. Um, I've owned a couple of different fleets at a time. And I can tell you that the biggest problem you're going to find as a fleet owner is finding and keeping drivers. And that you can make more money by yourself than somebody with four or five trucks. It looks slick. Money is coming in and they're able to shift it from here to there to buy the trappings that look like success. But the reality of it is that money is coming in the door and it's leaving out the window. How you doing? My name is Marquis. I'm from Baltimore. I know Iron. I work with PFG. Um, now I work with uh, U.S. Foods. Um, I'm just not trying to work So you anymore. trapped in a food world. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. shaking like a motherfucker, man. I did it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm realizing the game. You know, me and my wife, we talk about the, um, how the industry is. Man, we just trying to get on home and get a business started and everything else. Because it's a trap. Well, uh, yes and no. It's a trap as far as being a driver because what happens to most drivers is they get the job, they make it more than the average, 
nine to five, then they upgrade their life real fast. Mm -hmm. And when you upgrade your life out, you find to leave. And just as the Bible says, Bob slave to the men. Now you got this high cost of living person. And you're not able to save the money because what's coming in is leaving right back out. So the thing to do is to wait on upgrading your life by the truck, which is going to finance your life. There was a book I read called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it was by Stephen Colby. And one of the principles in there was talking about the goose and the golden egg. And what it was talking about is the goose is what lays the golden eggs. <laughs> so why are you going to kill the goose just so you can have the eggs? Then you don't got no more eggs. So you get the truck first, then the truck is going to allow all the other stuff to happen. No truck, no other stuff. You follow me? So are y'all planning on driving together? Um, right now, I have my city on. I don't know if she wanted to go see it. I'm... I would highly suggest it. I can tell y'all. And I, see, I don't think people understand the sacrifices I make for y'all. First off, we live in the Baltimore city. All right? I was born and raised here. This is an extremely treacherous city. I've been showing y'all my every dollar since 2018. Do y'all understand how dangerous that is to broadcast to yeah. this type of city yeah. that you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars? Yeah. All right. Not on, on top of that. All right, and I'm on top of my stuff. But then you got taxes, which I'm good with. But these, I want y'all to understand the sacrifice I've made for y'all to be here. And so you can appreciate it more because when you give somebody something at no cost, they tend to not value it. Right. So I may not be here if I you, you understand this. So, but the point I was getting at this December 31st or 31 or whatever it is, I'm solo drop. Now, I, I grossed 518000 by myself. Everybody ain't going to do that. And I'm paying the cost for doing that as well, which I'll talk about later. But if I could do that solo, which I would think y'all going to do together? This is the, the point I'm getting at. And so you're not going to do a million. Most people ain't going to be 500. Most people, if you get your own truck and your own authority, you bust 8,000 a week, that's 400 a year. You keep half of that, that's 200. All right. it's, from there, it's up to you what you do with the money. If you don't manage it correctly, then you're going to be like these guys complaining about trucking is dead. Mm -hmm. When the reality is, you need to take personal responsibility for your actions. And you overspent, and shit came up, and you couldn't afford it. And now you're going out of business because you moved to there. That's what's happening. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, How you doing, sir? My name is Kia. Um, I basically came here to learn. Um, I watch you on Instagram. I was telling my husband about it. Um, I, I have my own um, catering business. I'm a dialysis nurse. I also work uh, in Jessup in the prison for 12 years. Um, I work outside of just as well, and I'm into um, gaining as much, much information as I can. So I'm here to network um, and see what we can learn. Um, also, I mean, we don't know where we're going to exactly go at, but I just want to get as much information as I can so I can try to execute um, a plan. I'm in the process of writing a business plan. I've checked out um, yeah, leasing information about trucks. I, I watch you. I watch, you know, like you said, everybody gives you a piece. They just give you a prompt. Well, they what they trying to do it. I got to use it relatable. It's no different than somebody going to a strip club and getting a drink with somebody at the bar or a dance. Then being offered to go into the back room to get the real gift. That's what they don't. They just whack your appetite so they can sell you. That's it. Um, you and Justin, I got two cousins out there, Keon Eason and Jamal Eason. Both of them got 21 years. And um, You like the dialysis and all that other stuff? 
Because it seems like that could be a conflict of interest with y'all running teams. Um, not, I'm not saying y'all are going to do that. Right. I don't have the authority to push that on you. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it out there as an idea, as an option, because I know what it can be. But if you got everybody like it is different. So you got to maneuver within what your life boundaries are. And that's not for, up to me to decide. My job is to give y'all information and to break it to y'all raw and realistic so you can make a decision on what you want to do with your life. That's what I'm doing. Um, can I say? Go ahead. Um, one thing I did, I, did, I forgot to mention, um, I do have my own authority. Right. And I'm nervous as hell. What? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's good. It's activated. Wow, wow. Well, do you have insurance? It's mm -hmm. active. You mm -hmm. got a, a, a trailer? I don't got a trailer. I just got the. Uh, the have you booked loads under your authority? Okay, so that's good. So you're not on operator. Well, according, according, you, uh, according to FMCSA terminology, mm -hmm. you're an on operator. In the trucking world, you got company drivers, on operators, own trucks, and leasing the company. Then you got people that have their own authority. But if you're going by FMCSA terminology, you would be considered an on the operator to them, but not in the reality of what we're doing in trucking. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I got my authority, it was a little rough in the beginning, but after a while, it got kind of easy. So, you got your authority too? Yeah. yeah. Man, what's y'all coming out, man? What's this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> I came out here and laid it all out. Bullshit. Man, look, where are you from? What you do? Name, you know what I'm saying? Look, look, this ain't, y'all gonna make me show y'all who I am before you pick up each other. This is not what y'all think. This is not that shit they selling y'all. I'm risking my life to show y'all some shit because I know the money that y'all can make and change your life because it did it for me. Now, if you want to come here and hold back, you wasting your time because I'm not holding back for y'all. No, but when I, when I first spoke, I told you, you know, I'm in business and it will be trapped. Yeah. So I'm just telling my mind that it was rough in the beginning, in the beginning but after a while, I didn't have a trail. You know, I was on you know, power only, but after a while, it did feel yeah, good. And, and, and see, I'm glad you said that, and I'm going to touch on that here, just like when I was talking to her, and I said, um, shit, nobody owned a truck, and I have a CDL. Right. Well, nobody should activate their authority until they get a truck. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because there's different fields. So when you're in the power only realm, you're competing with all the other people who don't have trailers. Then the next step from that is the drive back. I'm talking the bottom of the low, the totem pole. Then you got reefers, then you got flatbeds, then you got cars. Um, it makes more sense because of how much the insurance costs to continue, how you doing? The sell section. To continue to be on the operator until you save up for the trailer or lease a trailer or it's a company called Coop. COOP.com, which is a division of Rider. It's not Rider. It's their form of an Airbnb or a Toro, but for trackers and for trailers, where you get a trailer for as low as 30 to $40 a day. And because what's going to happen is, if it, I show you all a load board every day, well, Monday through Friday. When you look dry vans, reefers, flats, You'll see three, four thousand loads, but if you go in there and look for power only, you're seeing maybe a dozen. Mm -hmm. And then even less than that if you're looking locally. So I wish I wish I wish I would have called me and so we could we can rap because sometimes in some situations you can make more money as an on the operator than what you're on the dollar, depending on your situation. And that situation is based on your insurance and your area. And that's what I was talking about with our gross and the price I'm paying. Because when you decide to bid, I believe you shouldn't do anything unless you prepared to deal with the consequences. So when you make a decision as an adult, then you are agreeing to the consequences. And when you decide to run however you run, one, when you get pulled over, when you get inspections, 
when you run the scales and the police come back and get you, when the shop was taking too long, so you just drove to the next shop, and you get these violations or you're running out of law or no law, it seems like it's just a ticket. It's not when you're a company owner. And we're gonna talk about that a little later on because what is it not? I wasn't saying that directly toward you because you're a man. I'm not going to talk to another man like that. I'm addressing the group to say, I'm giving y'all my all so y'all give me the same thing because I'm here for y'all. It's not no right or wrong. It's just, it's, some of y'all know stuff that I don't know. I'm just giving y'all what I do know, which I is on the journey. That, that wasn't no type of you know, stuff. Yeah, but I understand we're dealing with men with the prison system, the certain ways you do things. To um, make dealing with people. So, who uh, did you go, brother? What first off, was you finished? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna get better. You yeah. need to work on getting the trail. Once you get the trail, your whole life gonna change. The whole process of looking and finding loads is gonna be a snap of the thing. There's thousands of loads out there. Should take no more than 10, 15 minutes to find the load. But you're doing that power only. It's sort of like a secret society with the power on it. What I mean by that, not y'all thinking the nonsense. When you stop booking loads in the power only realm, there's certain brokers that live there. All right? And they tend to call back on the people that they've already dealt with. Or you deal, build relationships and you keep dealing with them to where you're not on the load for. That's why when you look on the board, you only see a dozen or so power only loads because they already booking them through other means, the way it's not making anything. So, but the process is, is, is like you said, it's going to be easier, and especially when you get a trailer. And you don't have a trailer as well? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, What kind of trailer? 53 uh, swing door. That's a drive in? Yeah. Have you considered getting a flatbed? I'm considering a lot of stuff, to be honest, man. Um, <laughs> Wherever the, the money is, and the, and the, uh, it's it's going to be in flat bed. I took a class in Arizona, a mm -hmm. freight broker class. This is what the first freight brokers do in the United States. So I figured it was a good idea. They charged me what thirty seven hundred. And one of the things I liked there was flat bed. Step that you pay a little bit more, um, but flat beds because it's less competition. Anybody in here that got drivers or had. Uh, understand that most people don't want to talk, they don't want to stretch, they don't want to be outside, they want to drive and lay back. But unfortunately, uh, the more you do, the more you pay for it. So, and, and, and drive vans is the least resistance arena. So there's more of them, anything you have more of is less valuable. So that's why people are crying, bless you. That's why people are crying, it's waters. Back here. That's why people crying about rates are dropping. No, rates ain't dropping. Everybody was happy because rates were up during the pandemic. And that was an artificial thing to where people were stuck in the house. So they had to order stuff online and go to the grocery store. And those are our dry goods. So you had more freight being shipped and less people to ship them. So less of something you have for more work. And then also the whole yin and the yang, like there's a big circle. We were saying the high then. We just on the opposite end. It's not gonna be forever, then it's gonna go back up to the that's how life is. But if, if you use the switch from that drive and you make one. So on, you only do your flatbed? Yeah. I I I I had seven trucks back in 2018, 2019. I bought two drive vans by default because mm -hmm. I was going by two trucks at a time every other month. And they didn't have no more flatbeds. And I didn't want to take the trucks home empty. And once I started looking at them, I'm not touching them. So I never even used them. I've done drive vans before, but just from studying the market and talking to people and just being out here in the field, that's the drive van is the least paid. Mm -hmm. And then especially if you're trying to uh, be in a local area. So I, I would definitely agree for it okay. if you're not trying to be physical with it. Yeah. But driving, uh, flatbeds is going to pay you more. Mm -hmm. and, and there's less competition. And 
we based off of construction and, and production. So you talk about aluminum, metals. When you start saying buildings and stuff being built, like not so long ago, not everybody was getting these long people throwing more construction and stuff like that. So we feel about it. Um, but I'm gonna get into that stuff in a, in a moment. Uh, who I ain't get over here?
If you can't, it's not the end of the world. It's not like with the dry van where you absolutely don't want a 48 foot with a roller door. You want a 53 with swing doors. With the flatbed, it's different. Uh, the majority of the loads don't even cover the whole trailer. So the, the 48 is the standard. That's why you'll see more of them for sale. If you can come across a 53, that's a plus. But it's not the end of the world. It'll give you space to put your tops and all that stuff. But that's not the end of the world. It's, it's either or with you. I prefer a 53, but it's not mandatory. You, pre you prefer that? Why? Just because you compared that? Well, because, be, like, that's times where I, I just had a 60 foot pole, and there was only one pole. Or there's times where they will specify 53. But that's the same as a step deck. There's times where a flatbed load can do a flatbed or a step, but sometimes they'll specify no steps or no flats. They just, and I'm speaking trucking times, I mean flatbeds and step decks. The brokers will specify that, but most of the time they're interchangeable. But you're not going to make any more or less with a 48. You'll have more options with a 53, but it's not going to stop your flow at all. You still want to be booked. It's loaded all the time, every single day. And like I was telling y'all earlier, a lot of the stuff I ordered didn't come in and I ordered oh, a few weeks ago. But I had a projection screen. I wanted to show y'all how to navigate through the load for me. But we'll do it next time because I'm going to continue to patronize her. And, um, have more beats here so people can come in line and also say y'all can meet each other. Is there any mechanics here? Trying to be. That's what I want to do. You want to be a mechanic? I pretty much work on my money and the Yeah, it's money and All these trucks need to be fixed and it's, it's, it's hard to find decent mechanics. And. You get a free apprenticeship. No, it's not. Uh, TA would do it. Loves will do it. Um, these truck stops will st start you off as a tire tech, then they'll start sending you to classes and you'll graduate up. So they out here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they got them apprentice programs oh, too. I see that posted up there. But um, for the group, I don't know if you remember, Sean. I call him if, if he don't. He said he will call you back. I think, I don't know if you remember, I think he was out west. He was coming through New Mexico. I was already out there, like San Rose or something. <laughs> yeah, and then another thing you gotta think, well, it's 24 hours in a day. These, uh, how many seats I take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, I guess it's 50 people here, maybe 20, somewhere around there. Just imagine if every single person called, and I spoke to every person for an hour. But then you gotta think of the thousands of people who are already calling. I'm just saying that to y'all because y'all should have called me because I could have saved you some time mm -hmm. or I could have gave you a resource that could have shortcut his journey or saved you some money from buying. You know what I mean? People that went out and bought box trucks and, and or rented them and uh, activated their authority and then they called them trying to sell them because they ain't making the money that they thought they was going to make or they thought uh, well, I don't want the A. I want the B. It's easy. And then now you twenty, thirty thousand dollars invested, and you're trying to get rid of it because you ain't making the money. And then you're still driving the same amount as you would have been in the track, and you're more uncomfortable because they don't have beds. In. So you're working harder, you less comfortable, and you lose the money for the same amount of work and more inconvenience, which is kind of like working backwards. You want to make more money, more convenience. More frequent. Um, Can I ask you something? Yeah. You, uh, who you, what you do with the box trucks? Who you pull? Uh, so I have all my drivers in the road. Okay. Uh, so I'm just, I, I have my own authority and it's easy. Right, right. You do low boards? I do low boards and I have direct shippers. Okay. I figured that most of, once I kind of started getting out there on my own, I mean, even down to my drivers, mm -hmm. once they drive and, they, and, I, and I give them pamphlets to, you know, to hand to those shippers. Right. Um, so That's I pretty good. much give them, I give them, if you, you give me a sales lead, then I give you $200, okay. but, you know, it just depends. Um, so I have, I have about four direct shippers today right. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much how I... Now, now I tell you, 
the, the best thing he did was get them direct shippers. And the reason why, I, so I took a class before, man, we was a freight broker class, and it said, uh, what comes first, the car or the horse? Everybody said the car. I mean, the horse. Because the horse pulled the car. But it was a trick question. We were saying, would the car come first? Fine freight didn't buy trucks was the principle that they taught us. So you got the direct shippers, but you moving into the tractors, they're going to have more loads than you can handle, and that's going to open up space for the broker to run it. Because another thing we was taught that once you get direct shippers, that um, they're going to hand you freight that you can't handle or that's outside of your area, and that's what you open up the broker side so you can broker out the excess freight. Also, if you're looking for direct shippers, is a, a book and a publication, you can get it. Hard copy, or you can get it digital. It's called the Manufacturer's News. That has every single warehouse in the United States categorized by zip code, by town, by seed code, which is the tells you whether it's number, steel, food, or whatever. And all that numbers in there. Yeah, and then blue grids. That's on the website, right? That's on the website as well. It may be in the helpful links. Um, and then also, I've been switching uh, internet people. My first website, I, I had a system on there that was innovative, which was uh, bringing drivers and trucking companies together. And so it wasn't done to where it could support the system. It's still there, but we have a new website because the files are getting bigger as I add more information and it will start to freeze. So the old website, uh, truckking85.com, has that. Uh, truckcan85.net uh, has a useful link section that has everything you need from no CDL all the way to financing trucks, get insurance, and all of that stuff. Um, but call me and I'll just give you whatever you need. It ain't nothing but a text away, a phone call away, because I got all this information that y'all need to be benefiting off of it while I'm here. Because one thing I like. Life needs to have me come from situations like that. It's tomorrow is not promised, and that's why I try to encourage people to go over the road while they're young as well instead of playing the block because you get to see stuff and get a different perspective and try stuff you would have never tried. And once your mind is expanded, it's like a wound. Once, once somebody leaves that virginity, it never comes back to the same. So it's good to get out there and see stuff and experience stuff that you can never try because it evolves you as a person. Black Hood, IT. What's up, Jay? Nay, where are you from, all that stuff? My name is Ricky. I'm from Maryland. I would say Baltimore. I'm really from a lot of places from birth. Got family all over. Been driving almost 16 years. Best way to sum up my story. If you ever heard the quote, give a man a fish, eat for a day, teach a man how to fish, and eat forever. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of being fed. You know what I mean? I started out over the road for two years. I've done the LTL. I currently do LTL. I've done gasoline. Uh, dabbling in a lot of things. Trying to figure out what works for me. Uh, never felt that nothing I did just didn't work. So I just, I just came here to meet. Three, because sometimes being in a room with like-minded people, you walk away, you walk away, and it may not hit you today, but it'll spark tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, I've never been around really an owner-operator where I can really sit and ask them a question. And they ain't going to tell you everything anyway. Well, go not, ahead. I'm, I'll be getting into that later. Gonna, I mean, I know owner-operators, and I know it's good, but I be wanting to know the bad. Mm -hmm. Tell me the bad. You can always work out of that. It's always about money. It's never really about money. You're going to make the money. That's what this is. This uh, the raw truth about trucking. They, they show you all these low. I see, just for the history, I'm the first person to ever show a freight rate online and to show the low board. But you see everybody showing rates now. Yeah. They ain't showing y'all asses when they break down. <laughs> I, I also came here to meet you because I've been following you for a while. And I'm not even going to lie, I kind of had in the back of my mind, I want to keep bluffing. 
I want to do bullshit. Yeah. When you, when you, <laughs> not for real, for real. That's, that's, that's real on everything. On everything. Right. Attraction. Like, I was like, is he stunning? Like, cause what? Hold on, hold on. Nah, go so ahead. then when he was like, I'm going to do this free seminar, I was like, I'm going to show up. You feel me? Like, that's me taking the first thing. And then. What okay. dig what, what this? Did you realize I was training people free CDL training yeah. for like six months behind the building? Yeah. Right. No, nah, because probably when you was doing that, I was probably doing my own thing. Like, no, I'm not saying that you should have been there. What I'm saying is, I got too much shit going on in my own motherfucking life to be <laughs> online and bullshit. Right. I don't even like talking. That's why I talk in a low tone. I'm projecting my voice because y'all here. Mm -hmm. On the day to day, I don't need. That's the couple people call me on some. What you doing? What's up? And I had to open up and show the motherfucker what you think this is. I keep a small ass circle. I'm not accepting applications for friends, and I don't trust people like that. And besides that, y'all don't know it because I'm showing y'all my good side, but I'm really a lunatic. If you really ever sit there and look at me, you can see something ain't right with y'all. <laughs> I think that about all truckers, though. That's just my No, nah, I'm telling you, I have a violent history. Okay, I don't like people like that, and I stay to my fucking self. And I, I done seen too much. All right? Best friends killing each other. Family members killing each other. Kidnapping. All of this shit from the closest people. So I really don't even fuck with people like that. I got a second chance and I'm trying to extend that to y'all because I understand what it does because it did it for me and I'm broadcasting my life as a living example so y'all can believe it. That's why I show my loads. Then I follow it up with the load board. Then I show you my travels. I'm stopping here. Then I show you I'm breaking down here. There's one thing about acting, right? And this helps some of y'all ladies. At some point in time, if you are playing a character, the lights, cameras, and action have to come off at some point. And nobody can stay in character forever. You can neglect to see <coughs> what it really is and convince yourself it's something else. But can't nobody... Well, I showed y'all my factory. Directly, every single thing I... I showed y'all my factory straight from my factory company. That's showing y'all all of my loads. That it's not in my nature. Did they cost me damn near seven thousand dollars to give y'all free information? That's money spent. On top of the money I'm losing, cause my load supposed to be in Texas. I'm sacrificing my personal free time to be here with y'all to help elevate your life because I know for a fact that it worked because it worked for me. Next person. Um, hello, G. Amy to clarify, you said IT. Remember, I took a $500 course to get the training. I got fired. I'm nice with it, but I'm not nice, nice with it. I'm not saying that I'm, I hear you, bro. I'm not saying that I'm about to call on y'all because I didn't trick you to come here so I can find people to work for me. I'm good. No, I'm I, was, saying, I just cause you was like IT. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't I'm, want the perception that I'm terrible with names. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm terrible with names. Like, yeah, room, room. I'm nice with it, but I'm not I can't go with a job, they're gonna be like nice. Nah, nah, this ain't some you. type of plot where I can scheme people to come here and build a team to work for me so I can <laughs> push some shit. I'm not I don't know. I got a complex even calling people to, for help at all. Yeah, so, so that's why I really ain't really call you. My homeboy calls you, whatever. But I, I'm, I'm the same way. My, like, all I my, don't even act, I don't ask people for help because I don't like being let down. Yeah, and so I don't like put. I call them Sean as friends. Not, not even just attacking that to cut you off. Not even attacking that to asking for help. But also, a lot of people tend to when you ask them for help. Like, you know, like, like, yeah, like, you, I owe you something. Like, oh, they try to hold it over right. your head. Right. Now, I know you, just from saying you, you're a humble person, right. but I'm one of the people to figure it out on your own. But right. also, and it's, and it's trucking, it's trucking game. Find yourself a mentor. 
Yeah. 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 That's a that's a, a tricky word today. So you need several people who have been where you're trying to go to help you. That's like you trying to walk through the forest with a, a hatchet and cut the bushes down when it's a path you can just follow. So what it took me twelve years in line, and, and y'all will see when I get into that, really you can shut cut this whole situation down to 18 months tops, starting from zero dollars. Mm -hmm. But realistically, you can do it in 60 days. I did it. I had a truck got hit by a fire uh, truck in Atlanta. And by the time we got done with the repairs and all this shit, I was down to zero. And I was the owner operator at the time, and I was considered out of service. So they held my paycheck, which was $2,200, which I was supposed to be paid midnight, mind you. Now, by the time we got done with the insurance and all this for weeks of being in the shop, I ain't had nothing. That's when, that was the straw cat broke my back when I found out, look, if you don't own the company, you just a glorified employee, which is what the owner operator is. Then I was living in Dallas at the time. I had a condo downtown for two brand new cars. I took the cars back to the dealership, did voluntary repossessions. I talked about all this in my first book. I took all my shit out of store, out of the, the spot, and put it in stores. And I was working for these engines. <laughs> we was getting 1350 a week. I ran my ass off for eight weeks and saved every dollar because my life was reduced to a phone bill in stores. Then I went and activated my authority. Uh, well, got the truck and trailer, activated my authority, moved on. Then I saved 24000 in my first three months. Then I started adding cheap trucks and trailers every other month, which I wouldn't have did if I knew now. That's, we're going to talk about that later. Now, I went from one to seven trucks in like nine months, and then I was buying them in two trucks, two trailer increments. And then I, I worked the financing so swell that we was jumping from two trucks and trailers to five trucks and five trailers. And I actually went and signed for five more trucks and trailers and never moved forward. We never stayed fully staffed. Out of seven trucks, we would stay like four drivers deep. We are doing like 130000 a month. But that's not profit. You see what I'm saying? That's why, you know, these guys put this show on and then behind closed doors, they call me. So I know what's going on out here, not only from personal experience, but from thousands of people calling me with issues, troubleshooting. So I don't, I don't even champion people getting drivers. Honestly, only way you're gonna be able to replace yourself as a driver is if you got five to seven trucks and trailers with your own authority fully staffed. Besides that, I can make more profit not money, profit that I keep. I make more money by myself than somebody with four or five trucks. That money comes in and it leaves out. They come in the door and leave out the window. Well, this, this is the trick, the truck. You get a truck and you like, man, I'm killing it. Then you like, shit, your brain get to work. All I got to do is get another truck and shit. I be doing this and that and this. That's some bullshit. You're not duplicating yourself. Nobody's ever going to work as hard for you as you. You busting ass every day. Mm -hmm. Then they going to, look, this is what you gross. They going to work less because every time they got to go to parole, they ain't going to parole, y'all going. Mm -hmm. Every time baby mother tripping and they got to get the kids, or so they say, <laughs> y'all got to get the kids. Doctor's appointments, dentist, then the money is coming down. And then you know what happens on top of that? They get in your truck and treat that shit like it's nothing. <laughs> and tear it and run it to the ground. And you got all this fucking maintenance. And then it, you're shifting money from left to right. And you're making tens of thousands of dollars a week. And it looked like you just brought in 50 grand this week. And you really ain't profit nothing but three, four thousand. You could have did that with one fucking truck. With blessing, headache. Five babysitting grown ass fucking men. You understand what I'm saying? 
So they selling y'all a big glorified ass dream, and that's what I'm here to break up. Next person, because I'm gonna I'm cover a lot of this stuff, but the real benefit, I mean, this shit is nothing. You can pay somebody six, seven hundred dollars and do all of this shit for you, and you get in the truck and run it. If you get your finances and all that stuff together, you get your equipment as far as your down payment for your truck and your trailer, or you lease the one and you get your uh, down payment for your insurance and you keep it moving like that. All of this shit is, is for sure. They, they package this shit up and got it looking all beautiful. You don't need one company you can do all of that shit for you. There's two things that's going to break it, break you, your company. Paperwork and maintenance. Maintenance will break your company and break your spirit. But that shit comes at the most inconvenient times. You understand me? So one thing you need to understand about the maintenance is, <coughs> back to that goose and the golden egg, once you become a truck owner, and this sounds harsh, Nothing is more important in life than that truck working. It goes like this. Truck maintenance, all right, truck insurance, truck note. That truck note can wait because the truck ain't running off the of maintenance. Why are you paying the truck note when you ain't making no money? <coughs> truck insurance can wait because if the truck ain't running, it's not making money to pay for insurance. And worst case scenario, as long as the truck is running, you can drop your insurance and go back to becoming an owner operator until you get your change back up and then just reactivate it and keep it moving. But you have to have that truck running because that's what's going to break you and take you out the game. That's what's going to do it. The paperwork is easy. If the, you got to pay that quarterly, they can freeze it if the account. You go on there and pay fifty, a hundred dollars to get that shit together. You find a company that do truck and paperwork, three, four hundred dollars. All that shit is being together and online. I don't do all of this shit. I've never done it. I paid FMCSA to fill out the authority application, so y'all wouldn't have to pay for it, and put it on my website. So all you gotta do is print it and, and answer. The questions verbatim and put your trucking company in there so you don't have to pay one of these companies that's going to charge you six, seven hundred dollars. This is, I don't know if y'all got over a hundred grand on y'all in as far as totally in the streets. I done gave away thirty something thousand dollars worth of hard copy. Was there anybody in here when I was riding around the city day and night all the way to five o'clock in the morning dropping off books to your house? Mm -hmm. I got one. He came up with <coughs> Couple years ago. See what I'm saying? So I'm doing this for y'all because shit I don't talk about. And life has consequences. And I did a lot of shit in my life and I always got in the back of my mind that one day some of that shit can come back. So I'm making the use of my time while I'm here. Not saying it will, but I understand the possibilities that it can because I've witnessed. So y'all take advantage of me while I'm here. Next person. Uh, Michael Christian, driving for uh, six years. Do a lot of port work. Right now I'm doing like going around to New York City. I just came here today. Just want to hear what you're talking about. I'm following you a while on social media. So just wanted to stop there. Where you from? You sound proper as hell. In Baltimore. <laughs> from I live in Hunter County, but my family in Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody say that shit though. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Um, my thing with over there. Anybody I miss? Ski mask. <laughs> All right, how y'all doing? My name is Quinn. Uh, I do traffic control, but I want to. Traffic control? control. You a flagger? Yeah, you can call it. I ain't got that shit out, man. <laughs> I used to do it. I'm the man. Come on, bro. bro y'all don't understand. When I first got out of prison, you know what my first job was? I was telemarketing for Anvest. That was paying me $18 a day. And while I was telemarketing, I was working at Burger King. And I was going to truck driving school, and I was selling chips and candy at school, and I was going to school for my GED because I got put out of the joint. So, and, and I was flagging on Saturdays out for Tactico. They paid us $77 a day at the temp agency. Labor fines. Y'all can't tell me, listen, I done been through the ranks, bro. So, 
I'm covering yourselves, because that's what I'm doing for y'all. I've risked my life to be here. <laughs> I'm telling I'm, I'm, I'm spending thousands, I spend thousands of dollars marketing to criminals to tell them how much money I make to convince them that they can do it too. So don't come in here with the shits. Just go ahead and break it out, because I ain't going to be here forever, bro. And then it may be a time where I get on some shine shit and don't really be trying to be fucking with people, because I really just like being by myself. Nah, uh, bro, I mean, honestly, bro, I appreciate it, bro. I, I've been watching you for a minute like others, for real. Bro, I've come straight from prison, bro. I just did 13 years straight. Got locked when I was 16. Just came home, and I've been trying to do what I When you come home? Uh, 2019. Actually, no, 19, 21, because I got locked up for 18 months. and just came right back home. I'm just trying to find a way out. So you missed him. He did what? He did a dub. Did 20 plus since 2002. He mm -hmm. just got the feds. He got a CDL. We working, uh, delivering food. If you don't mind, what's the, what, well, take yourself out of it. What do you drive, the drivers in the company normally take home a week? Before Somebody taxes and out. child support and all of that stuff. Yeah, all that, about 3,382 3, weeks. Can you live with that? About 3,382 weeks. Yeah. That's right, the, all the taxes, all the dental, health care, and all that. Right, but so what's the gross then? What if somebody was to opt out of that? Because you know you can opt out of it um, as far as how you do your dependence and non dependence and stuff on your taxes. Well, you would make even more. Right, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because everybody, people got child support, all that type of stuff. What's the, the, the income number before the deductions? Because everybody's deductions are going to be separate depending on how many kids. Man, it might be like, like 4000 You got guys, man. He's making 19 11, yeah. 12, now. My training. You do full too. Yeah, yeah, we work together. I there, yeah, I was there. Uh, my training, when he was training me, 25 years old, he, he was broke and called 13,000. A month. Yeah. And his, right. and his father got two trucks, and he can work with his father, but he trying, you know, get his, you know, some paper out and then he'll probably do it. So, right. Go ahead. And it's saying, oh, come on, baby, on the road, bro. I travel yeah, from the east to the east to Maryland every day. I'm already on the road. I like driving anyway, but my problem is, Everything came off my license up, and nobody gonna hire me. Well, don't say that. First of all, you gotta take positive, for one. And also, where's the problem? I'm gonna show y'all something with your hands in a minute. Um, what's wrong with your license? Uh, right now it's suspended because I went out of license, but I got other points. How many points? Like, like, like 13. <coughs> All right, so that stuff falls off on time. Um, I got a DUI just being transparent with y'all. Oh, yeah, I know. So that's not the end of the world. For y'all that like going out and doing whatever y'all doing or if y'all ever get into a rage <clears throat> and whatever the case is, you got one shot with a DUI. You get two DUIs, they're going to take your CD out indefinitely and you will never get it back. Moms against drunk drivers, bad. Okay, they on that ass. Also, um, marijuana. People is more becoming more and more legal, but they got something for y'all ass. It's called the SAP program. They ain't even tell nobody about it. They implement it. And so you go on there and fail the drug test, and they fucking freeze the DOT card to make you go through a drug pro uh, treatment program. And somebody has to give you a return to duty status. And this weed that they smoking nowadays is not that hot we were smoking back in the day. I mean, they had good stuff, but this, these, this ain't these $800 pounds of reefer. These $800 ounces. And that shit, that old 30-day clean system shit don't go no more. It's staying in longer, so you want to want to invest in some products to clean your system. Because I know people who waited time frames and, and still got banged up. And invested some products to clean your system, as well as shampoos, because you don't know which test they're going to give you. Mm -hmm. They can give you a swab, they can give you a piss, they can give you a head. That head is going back far. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be. Some... Too. They, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So. See what I'm saying? Y'all would have never knew that just reading the book. I don't know that. 
So, and I'm not a tech person, but a lot of people been jammed up fucking with that shit, but where there's a will, there's a way black people are always find the way people get past parole, probation. Um, I personally heard of people who have never went a day without smoking weed for them, drive cash on them trucks, and been doing it for years. So, it's not the end of the world. Be aware of it. Don't get caught up. But the license thing, that ain't the end of it. Um, that ain't the end of it. If you got a reckless driving on your record, that'll hinder you. In the beginning, your first six months, your points are worth more. As time goes past, your points are less. And people are begging for drivers. So my thing would be to get the license, Get the A, even if you don't get a tractor job. It's local people who got four or five trucks that got drivers coming in and out all the time. And it'll be just that time where you get the job. Or you just dump truck jobs. And what'll happen is you get it, get to working. Like the same, you haven't noticed where you sing, where ain't nobody thinking about you saying you get a girl with everybody popping up. It's the same way with jobs. It's easier to get a job when you have one because you've already proved that you can handle it. See what I'm saying? So it's easier to upgrade jobs than it is to go through. You might not handle it after a second. It's easier to upgrade jobs than to go on that neck. My first job wasn't a trucking job. I was on violence prevention unit. I was on the box. I was fresh out, still on parole, couldn't leave the state. I had no work experience because I was never working nowhere. I, I, I got a hookup bag fucking UPS when I was 17 and went in there one day. I'm oh, man, I'm not doing I'm making thousands of dollars. I left all that, not that fucking trap. Um, so the point is, get the, the license, get to working, and then there's one thing, the brother over there was talking about saying if I was bluffing. Well, you know who else know whether you're bluffing or not? God. Mm -hmm. You can fool people, God read hearts. <laughs> when you for real, shit will start happening, bro. And I'm not saying that you aren't for real. What I'm saying is from my life, I know for a fact that there are times when none of the facts added up and I still, a way was made. And I used to keep a book to keep track of that stuff. There's been too many to count. So it's not our load. You have to get to started. And then as you start, first off, once you start working and making a decent amount of money, you're going to start feeling better about yourself. And so I'm here teaching y'all trucking, but my real background is way deeper than this. I've been trained by some serious motherfuckers, man. I spent a lot of money on my education. And so you are a person. You have a body. But your body is just carrying your spirit. And then you got an orbit that surrounds you. And so you ever meet somebody you just don't like? Out the back, never talk. <laughs> then you got people come in and liven up the whole room. That's your aura. People can sense whether you're on some bullshit or not. So as you start working and doing some things for yourself, you're going to start feeling better about yourself. That's going to change your auric field. And the things that are allowed to come into your life is going to change. So, but it starts with the first step. Now, can you back off that? Right. So one thing that I found out that, that works for me is that I write down shit on my bathroom here. Right. And it's like, they talk about manifestations and things like that. Yeah, we gonna, I'm going to show you all something in a second. It's going to blow your fucking mind. I, my, my aunt told me when I was in college to write a check of how much, how much money, money I want to make by a certain age. I was 22 at the time. And I said, by 35, I want to make $125,000. I want to make it that year. I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know nothing. I had a job. And I also had a side job, okay, that I was doing landscaping with, you know. So I made the 
uh, 100, but I made the 25 from, your side job. from the side job. And didn't even think about it though, right? So then I'm like, yeah, I'm 35, and I, and I, and I hit that shit, right? Mm -hmm. So then when I got, I started, you know, being more invested in myself, the bathroom, I'm writing shit on, I look at my, I look good, right? But I'm reading as I'm, say I look good, right? And saying it out loud. Huh? saying it out loud, right? So And writing it down, do if that. you go and write it, use a blue pen. A blue the, pen? Yeah, because uh, colors, just like numbers, um, have personalities. They all got different names. Another time, but you use a blue pen. Yeah, I pay a lot of money to learn that. That's true. That's true. So I'm, I'm just saying, like, you know, for everybody, write it down, read it every day. Say it every day. I'm telling you, you will see how much your life will. It's the truth. No, nah, it's true. This stuff that I'm doing right now, I was telling my bosses this 10 years ago. I was a limo driver. I had a car so they can salt me. You know what I mean? Something else to me. So, um, you're right, and I'm going to prove that you're right in a couple seconds. Is there anybody that I missed? But you, you make sure you, you well, everybody will have my number, but we need to talk personally because I, it's places. You start with the temp agencies, the fast food, and warehouse jobs at the bottom. One job is not going to do it. You need all of them. Every single hour of the day you need to be working if you're not in school. Yeah. And as, and then you get in school and start working towards what you're working towards, and you're gonna start bumping into people. And then I'm here. Then all it's look, it's people in here right now that's gonna own trucks in a second, mm -hmm. and they gonna need drivers. And you you wouldn't even you can't even imagine how I gotta put all this stuff together. You be pumping gas somewhere, and bumping into somebody. Can I piggyback off that? Yeah. Where you from? Keeping your number. I do LTL. I meet, I go to like 19, 20 different people every day. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I, I talk to people on the people first. I'm in places where dudes don't have the best situation, right? But they, like a movement company I go to, in the summertime, these dudes bring home $5,000 in a week, and they go out with a driver. The owner, be a look, be a look out. He might put you in a truck. So you keep your number. When I go to places, I ask questions. I got friends that they got these jobs. I just plug them in with the people I go to because I get to go to the back door. Nice. So shoot me your number, I come across your name, so get the full degree. And when I go to places, I ask, you tell me the situation, I ask straight up the front. When I got my job, I told my boss, I told the supervisor what it is with me. I can't work this, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. I'm taking a leave. He said, okay, I proved you. I'm going to do that in People, you feel me? So I got it. I and, 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 and I appreciate you, brother. And that, see, y'all gonna see basic truths in life, life don't change. Truths stay the same. They, and they're interrelatable. Um, so we was talking about earlier about when I was asking everybody to move up, the purpose and the benefit of being here. As when I was talking about you do the business marketing, you do the accounting, you do the TI. So you see how this just happened? And it's just the beginning. Right. You see what I'm saying? I ain't even did my thing yet. And then y'all ain't even had y'all a chance to, to mingle with each other and, and pass information and all that stuff yet. So, and it's on the operators in the room, it's people with their authority in the room. These people with their authority, if they choose to, is going to be getting trucks soon. You may be working with somebody who may not have that experience, but hey, boy, go on the road for a little bit like she did. Get them six months and come back. I take a shot on them. My drivers make $1,800, $2,000. Now that I drop this on you, you make more money with small companies than you do big companies. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, my father got his PO, and he's an ex carpet. It was GCBC. I'm sure that you yeah, have everybody. I know it's a. That's how I got mine going. That's how I got mine going. I, I graduated in uh, October. I started in August. And they got, in don't they got the diesel mechanic out there? Um, it's, it's all there, bro. And, and then because you got COVID going on, like, and, and all, most of y'all from Baltimore, you, you won't get the money for free. So you're not going to pay nothing out of pocket. 
And if you, uh, Amazon, not Amazon as an independent trucking company. That was a thing at one time. Mm -hmm. They fooled everybody to come build their businesses and they cut the rates. Mm -hmm. That's why people complain about it. Mm -hmm. But Amazon as the company will hire you in the warehouse. And if yeah. you work there, they will pay for your CDL. Yeah. Matter of fact, I had somebody call me That's facts. this week. <laughs> Wanting me to train them because I'm transitioning. That's why y'all see me post as much as often because I'm transitioning. I've been on the road seven years, at the home 12 years. I did my first six years in the port. So I'm transitioning off the road and setting up my next phase. Mm. So I just had somebody call me this week. Amazon is paying, people, uh, paying for people to get their CDLs. Mm -hmm. You just got to work for them. So it's opportunities it's out here. It's hard to get in there now. It's not like it used to be. It's not. I used to work at three and I got, you know, in a situation, got locked up for six months, tried to look back, and I was on the reason I holler. And they couldn't explain to me and said they didn't have to explain to me. Well, that was after uh, you working there and not working there. But they wouldn't tell me where I couldn't go back. Let me, let me, let me say this. Everything. I don't even think of qualification for, for who? Amazon. I'm telling you, I'm not going to do everything by myself. Start my own business, drive for myself, and do everything by myself. You can. You can. Nobody. And you will. Yeah. But but just dig this. And I understand you got off with them. That's, that's your other thing. But it is true that they will pay for people to get CDL. No, that's all that's true if you work right. for them. So that's y'all thing. I'm not saying I'm not lessening it. I'm saying that's an isolated incident. And as far as with you, if they won't take you now, continue to put in applications. And then also, that's one option. Look, you responsible for your life. I remember when I was in school, I thought that fuel paid the most money out of everything. So I put in so many applications, they wrote me a letter back asking me to please not send them more applications. Wow. I still to this day haven't done fuel, but shit, I ain't crying about shit. You see what I'm saying? You're crying about shit. I quit. Yeah. Remember when that dude went off the bridge that winter? Yeah. yeah. He thought it was me. I quit. That was the week I quit fuel. Oh, wow. wow. Wait, what happened? Yeah. Yeah, it was ice and traffic jam and all that stuff, and it's, it's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, that was my own. We used to talk rap every day. It's not that bad. It just take up a lot of your time. You really burn your hours off. You work from the sun to the sun. Yeah, I mean, that kind of was the best job I had. That's the most money I ever made. So Fuel. I have a son and six year old, and I'm like, I was literally working for the sun to the sun. I thought Fuel was night work. It is night work, but mm -hmm. I worked on a day. You I didn't. Mean, I, six did and night. Morning, I did night. Was you on the operator? No, no, no. I was working for um, Holy Zone. I did King. Oh, I hated okay. it. <laughs> I did it for the experience. Yeah. Why I, I built a relationship. Right. When he went off the bridge, I said I salute thank you for everything. But the my fair share of scares, that was God work. Because my tank mm -hmm. almost rolled over on your floor. Oh, um, yeah. When he went off the bridge, they thought it was me because I was green. I was new. Mm. Summertime outside, I got every piece of equipment on. Yeah. You feel me? So yeah. he said I could come back with my own truck. And they was the ones making that money. Yeah. I said no. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, hi, y'all. I'm Shelly. Um, we got mutual. You know William, the attorney William Beard? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I that's, owe my freedom, man. Exactly. That's, man, we real close. Um, I'm I in spoke the, to you before. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I'm in a holistic living, so you know that's what he in now. Who black CEO? Yeah, he he. Well, we could talk aside, but he not on Charles Street no more. But um, I know him personally. Like, he ain't on Charles Street no more. No, nah, he gone. They they doing it out the house. But yeah, so um, that was my first because you know he got all the books. He got he had your books all laid all out in the in the office. But when I grabbed the book, my son he's been doing CDLs for ten years, and I was like Sean. You know it's somebody named Sean. He said, man, I got many of his books. I didn't call them and all that. Make a long story short, my son been driving. I hate my job. I hated it. So I was like, you know what, Sean, I think I might want to drive. He was like, ma, I think you can do it. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. Um, make a long story short, I changed my career, and I'm here. 
So, um, I, um, I just had a year, I didn't drive, I didn't drive tankers, I didn't had, uh, I drove tankers, I'm at the port now, I've been over the road for four months, um, I did a, a hell of a lot in a year, Why but, um, huh, I did a whole, a hell of a lot in a year. My first, my first three months I was over the road, um, that was very scary for me, but again, what was somebody, scary about it? the mountains, um, I you know, both of y'all call it mountains. How I, far know, I, I know, I know. Look, we ain't gonna talk about mountains, but for a newbie, a mountain is a hill. I'm just gonna say that. So it's not, I, it's not what you consider a mountain, Sean. I get it. But for me, it, I was brand new. Brand new. I was new. So I, you know, again, my son, he was my mentor. So I would call him crying and whining, say, Mike, you got this. Like the hard part over. Um, I worked for um, Dan Bowman. They put me in a truck and just told me to go. So I, that's what I did. I, hold on, hold on. Hey, go ahead. What's your name? Q. You, the only thing you doing is traffic control? No, I need security on the side. All right. What? Okay, all right. So I don't want to take all your time. But anyway, I did, I did a lot. So um, I'm back to the parable. I, I don't want to ask nobody to feed me no more. I don't want to work for nobody. Ultimately, if my son got the experience, um, I want to get with you. I, I, I got a degree in accounting. Like, so, like, literally, it's a win-win for us. Like, I'm just tired. Like, I'm really tired. So, ultimately, my plan is to get some assistance and get educated and just work on my own because I'm tired. These companies get all the money off my back. You know, I, I sleep less. I work hard. Mm -hmm. I just need some. I just need to do my own thing. That's it. That's all. So... We're going to get into that in a second. Um, it's all you need right here. You ain't got to You got to get out everything you need in a second. It's all right here. Yeah. And if you have text 85 to me before, hey. I sent this out to y'all a couple weeks ago. So y'all already have it. And it's been updated on the website, so it'll be available on that. Text 85. Huh? That is. Well, I got, a, it's called a slick text. So, too many people was calling me to the point where at the end of the night, it was taking me like an hour and a half to send all, because I saved your name, email, then email all of the books, then reply to questions. So I created a buffer where the slick text will send you my website, which has my books, which aren't on ebook, I have them in email, but I don't have to send them individually because emails can only hold a certain amount of data. So all the books are free on the website. So when you text 85 to 855 675 now I'm gonna give y'all all that stuff. Yeah, I ain't going away. I'm, I'm here all day. I ain't even here at 7 p.m. Um, then it automatically sends you my website so you can read the books and it sends you my number so you can call me with your questions after you looked at the information. Because when you look at the information, it's gonna give you everything you need in theory. <coughs> then I'm here to walk you through it step by step if you got kinks in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, go ahead. That's it, that's it. So I'm, that's why I'm here. I, me and him gonna figure so, it out. So you know Mr. Boyd. Yes, personally. Your son drive. He drive. He's been and driving. you see it, how, what it's doing with his life, and he's thinking about doing it. I already, oh no, I already got my CDLs. I already, um, I drove for Bowman over so the road. So you trying to get the? Oh yeah, because you was on the road. And then I the drove mountains. for JB Hunt, and then I, and then um, I just got finished feel I just was, I just got finished driving for um, Diesel Direct and Shell Tapa. I don't like tankers, and I don't like to smell <laughs> like gasoline. Um, I heard it seeping your pores. I never got a chance. To man, go. you, you like. Your throat be burning and you like, what is that going on? Anyway, I'm at the port now. But I'm still the overall thing. I did this whole transition to feed myself. I don't want to work for nobody ever again in life, period. So that's that's good. One thing, um, anytime you're trying to level up or move into a different phase, the enemy going to attack you. Exactly. So, and I say that to say, that it's way more stuff to this. I bought it, it didn't come. And a lot of shit didn't happen in these last two days to try to prevent this from happening. Mm, but we're still here. 
So I don't have all of the handouts and all of the shit that I had for y'all. Um, one thing about Boy, I was, he been representing me since I was a juvenile delinquent. Um, I was charged with an attempt murder. Mr. Bowie represented me. I'm here now because of him. Along with all the other shit throughout the year, it took me a long fucking time to learn my lesson. They, they, my, my brother, God brother, he called me a, a minister of society when I was young. They used to say they was building the baby books for me. So, you're not going to see it now, because that's how good God been to me. And I'm like a whole nother person. But all that shit is still there. That's, that's why I have my house set up the way I do, so I constantly remind myself, so I don't never get challenged with the temptation. Excuse me, not never, because I will and I have been. So I won't make the wrong decision and go back, no matter how tempting it is. And it can't get tempting because as you elevate in life, people will knew you from then. Or when you get into different social set, uh, settings, you bump shoulders, it happens. You just gotta understand that shit is an illusion and there's no point of having a Ferrari if you can only drive in the dead and out. What I mean, you drive real fast, had it nowhere. Mm -hmm. And it's very temporary. And as far as I know, I haven't met anybody who beat the game. They've all done decades in prison. And for five, six, maybe seven years of glory, they got to live off of that representation up until their 50s and 60s when they've been released. And they just had legends. All of that shit is gone. So anybody in here believe that myth, get that shit out your head. It's bullshit. You're either going to die, either shit going to start happening to your family that you can't even live. You know how many people I know lost their mind? I thought dudes was having bricks. <laughs> went crazy. So much shit happens out here that people don't talk about. And they camouflage it by nice clothes, jewelry, and cars. Medicaid through drugs, alcohol, and sex. And they channel it through violence. You know any serial killers, they have real troubled, I'm, I'm not talking dumb, I'm talking real people that still walk the streets free today. They deal with trauma from life. And it's coming out on people. So you look at people, you gotta look past who their actions and, and look down into the soul of the person to see who they really are. And if you look, get into the human development, you start seeing that. You ever meet somebody, we used to call them dummies when I was young. Head monsters. Ain't nobody never took the time to say, well, where did she get all this experience? Never knew she was getting molested since 13, her stepfather or stepbrother or cousin. You don't never know what the fuck going on with people. That's my point. Um, I'm gonna keep some of this shit off camera, but I try to be as real with y'all as possible. All of us got some shit going on that we dealing with that have groomed us into the adult that we are, and that's why we do the things we do, act how we act. And that's why our life is the way that it is. But the good thing is that we all have power to change that. Actions create results. Thoughts create actions. And if you change what's happening up here, you can change what's happening down here. So you can increase what's in here. And that's what I'm going to show you. Anybody I miss? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name Rel. Uh, I've been driving for seven months now. Uh, my turn. I came here, I turned 30 in like three months, just trying to gather as much knowledge as possible, trying to buy a tractor for my 30th birthday. 
I'm up from Baltimore. Go legs. They say like you want to change when you feel like you got enough knowledge to change. Bring on a couple dollars. Feel more than I ever brought on before, but trying to bring on a little bit more. A coworker of mine told me about you, so I was probably only following for like two months. But like this year, 2023, just trying to make a difference for real. That's what's up. Are hey, you going to? You said you about to turn 31. Yeah. Eight, what you doing as far as working here? I work um, for Central, Central Transport. Oh, okay. okay. So they paying y'all good over here? I mean, I'm in 29. Yeah. Shit, you know what I mean? People out here making 14, 15. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. As far as a job, working, it's one of the best jobs out there. Well, you know, it, as far as manual labor and all that, I mean, some people got to touch for you, yeah, but the majority of people don't. So as far as jobs, you don't have to go to college forever. Um, you can get started real quickly. Your background don't matter. And it's a very, very high demand. People back for jobs. One thing I was trying to say earlier, you make more money when you're working with smaller companies. The guy who got four, five, seven, ten trucks, he gonna pay you more than a big company is. Why? Because I was talking about the consequences that I'm in. When you, there's, rules you have to follow with trucking. You can work 14 hours a day. You can drive 11. Within that first eight, you got to take a half an hour break. All right? Smaller companies uh, can give a goddamn about the rules. So, that's a small company will. I got home to the way to the place. I was on the way to the place. <clears throat> He's like, how far do you run? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> He's like, I, I don't even need to take a look. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. Uh, I'm not here to teach y'all how to do wrong, but you're going to do wrong anyway. So I'm here to help y'all. Regardless of which way, I don't care. If you got a company or you're driving, you drive within 150 mile air radius, you are log exempt. If you have a truck with an engine, not the truck, if the engine is older than 2000, I mean in 1999 and older, you can get engines rebuilt. The engine going to get a million miles easy off of it. You just get the engine rebuilt. You have to, your e-log exempt. So you're not controlled by electric, computer, satellites. You pen and paper how you drive. And your integrity is up to you to judge. So those are the loopholes holes as far as hours. Other than that, um, if you stay, we're in Baltimore, so if you stay under Prairieville and over 495, there's no to uh, no, no way ones. stations. So the likelihood that you get pulled over is slim. Um, so that's how you do it. And then as you become more experienced, you'll know how to drive around scales. Um, some people just run scales. <laughs> All that type of stuff. This was the reality of what happened out here. I'm not talking right and wrong. I'm talking what's happening. So. And I don't know if y'all know like about personal conveyance. If y'all company lets y'all have access to that feature or like ELD. But you can basically run without any time. Alright, so that's about everybody. I had to go. I just had something single. Nah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm here for y'all. I just, just want to let I'm going to give y'all this, but I'm so here you, for y'all. You're thinking about getting, you know, you're on, thinking about becoming an owner operator. Credit, personal credit. Right. Can make you, can advance you more than having a full credit score, right? That'll help what you. What you mean? You just lost that. You said that'll personal help, credit. That'll, that'll help you get your truck a little faster so if you don't have that. 30, 40,000 hours to be put down, right? Good right. credit goes a long way. I know because I messed, I messed my credit up and it took me a lot longer to, to get where I'm, I'm at now. You get what I'm saying? Right. And also, trucking is different as far as financing. So, a lot of banks don't want to finance trucks. Right. But, but there is a whole entire trucking finance world of people who specialize in it. Here's the formula. It used to be 20 to 25 percent. Now you need 30 to 40 percent. If you got bad credit, you can get a truck. You just need the down payment. 30 to 40 percent will get you a truck no matter what credit is. Um, 
Richie Brothers is a truck auction that finances trucks. They will finance anybody as long as you have an LLC, which is we're going to cover it over here. They are going to require a 25% down bid. Okay? They gave me 150,000 bidding power. I done got dues for child supports and all that type of stuff. 50 off the bat. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're going to need, to, you don't have to use all of it. And the portion that you use, you're going to need 25% down. Um, there's some things I'm not qualified to talk about. A lot of people call me and ask me, is this a good truck, is that a good truck? I can't say. One, I'm not there. Two, I'm not a mechanic. Three, I've bought trucks. I haven't been through 19, 20 trucks. I've bought trucks, had all test samples sent to the laboratory. I done took it to franchise mechanics to have overlooked. And you still have issues. Mm -hmm. You can't escape maintenance when you're talking about trucks. So, that's why I'm talking about the paperwork and, and maintenance. Maintenance is what's going to break the spirit, and that's what we're going to talk about down here because there's certain ways to go about it. This is what's going to happen. You starting off your company drive, hey, this going well. Uh, a man got a truck, I should go get one. You save me $5,000, then you go get your money together, get a truck. Then you go make six, seven thousand dollars a week, and then it's going. Three, four months, oh shit, this shit is going good. I had to start that brand new Bighorn F-150 2025. Then you go buy it. Then you go buy the house you want. And forget you got to put furniture in it. Then you go run up 10, 15,000 furniture. Mm -hmm. Then you got this house and this car. You got to look the pup. You know what I'm saying? Then you got all this stuff which is attracting other stuff, the shoes come with the laces, now you think you're cute. <laughs> they ain't that. Then next thing you know, all the money is gone. It comes in and it looks like you're making all this money and you ain't keeping none of it. That's why you, you, you're going to need ten to $15,000 at all times. Ten grand will get you out of the majority of maintenance. It does not have to be cash. It can be credit cards. When you talk dollar amounts, you don't need physical cash. Cash or credit will work just as fine. The majority of people take electronic payments. But if you bought your truck correctly, your engine, transmission, and your rears, and if you're extra special and you, you got DEF, which I, I don't recommend you get, got your DEF system under warranty. So that stuff should be covered. There are some uh, people out here who try to wiggle out of that stuff, but for the most part, they take care of it. All of the other stuff, you're just going to be drive maintenance, drive maintenance, drive maintenance. Little stuff is going to happen all the time. You always, look, you, you got four trucks, yeah. you constantly tinkering and battling it with maintenance. Thanks. Well, my first, my first couple, because I, I, I came from UPS. I was at UPS for nine years. Got tired of it. Jumped in this. I was going through a lot of life situations. I had a couple cousins that got killed. All of this other stuff. So I was tired. I was tired of everything. So I bought me a truck. <clears throat> got me, got out here. <clears throat> now, I do have people, you know, family members that's in the truck. I never came to them to ask questions. I found everything out on my own. I spent 20000 one month. You know, I made the money, spent twenty thousand one month, engine went up, bought a lemon, you know, a lemon truck, yeah. and, and stuff like that. I was going through it. I was going through it. Um, so you know, you, you, you that's like, like that's why I say get a mentor. You know, get a mentor. It's a, it's a lot of things that you can, that you can, you know, yeah, it's not a lot of things you can, you can, you can learn from them, from their experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, can I ask this? Is it better to, to lease a truck or? Buy straight up. Is that that depends on you. I, I rent it. I rent mine. That depends on you. If you're going to run, rent it. If you're going to run, rent it. And then that that gives you 100% drive time. Because if it go down, if they can't fix it there, mm -hmm. they'll just send you another truck and you can keep uh, rolling. 
the, what I don't like about that is getting my space set up how I wanted it. Then keep that and shift out and shift out. <laughs> I don't like that. But it will keep, if you one of them guys or girls that's on some, I'm just trying to run a few miles and go home. First off, you ain't gonna make it on your own anyway. I stay away from the type of people. <clears throat> you, people think becoming a business owner, it, that's gonna give you the opportunity to kick back. That's false. You will work harder on as a business than you will ever work working for somebody. You gotta be, Position is yours. I've been home since Friday. I just slept in my bed last night. Right. I've been to the house. I ain't slept there. Mm. That's what I'm saying. But y'all see me. I may look pepped up, but shit. You don't know what I've been going through after the night. Fixing this and dealing with this one and, and paying this and, and I'm saying freezing cold outside and, and you can't, this is like, you have to be the hardest manager of it on time. But to answer your question, there's different ways to get a truck. You can buy a cash truck. When I started, 10 grand to get you in the game. We was running, poor people buy six, seven thousand dollar trucks, running them until they blow, take them to the uh, scrap yard, take that money and buy another truck and keep the game running. So we was running trucks like blocks, burn it out, then move on to the next one. Now, it's going to take you about 20 to get started, 15 to 20. And it don't have to be uh, cash, it could be credit. You can buy us cash trucks. You don't want to take them far. It's paid off, your overhead is low, make you four or five thousand dollars. You can spend seven, eight hundred thousand dollars on diesel. You may spend two, three hundred on repairs because you're not running as much, you're not wearing it as much. So your maintenance is less. It looks like you're making less money, but you can be making more that way because your overhead is less. You're burning less diesel and you're spending less money on maintenance and you're dealing with mechanics that you know. They're going to rape you over the road. I'm telling you this for a fact. You get out in the middle of trunk lines, they don't give a goddamn who you is with your slick ass shoes. <laughs> $600 to come out just to not even touch a truck. Right, city slick. No. We got one, boss. No. <laughs> I had a guy come out and say, yep, yeah, I called my boss. He said it's the engine. Get the fuck out of here. What does mean? No. Yeah. So that's how they play these games. Was you, can, you can cash, you can finance. If you finance, you want to keep your payments under fifteen dollars $1,000. Less if, if possible. You get you a twenty, thirty thousand dollar. You shouldn't be spending more than fifty grand on a truck unless you prepared to live on the road. All right. Then you got brand new trucks. They are gonna run you about two hundred. When I started, brand new trucks was like ninety to one hundred twenty thousand. I just he might come later on. Uh, I had a guy. He put fifty grand on a brand new truck. The truck was two hundred. Good thing about that, all factory warranties, all that stuff, take it back to them. Bad thing about it, brand new trucks still have problems. Yeah, right. I thought, my last fleet, I thought if I gave people better trucks, paid them more, they would work harder. Them trucks still had problems, and they still rode like they was doing about it. Brand new trucks not having problems is a myth. And, if you're going through warranty and you're taking it to a shop, the shop, a, a franchise shop, like a Peterbilt yes. shop, they, you're not walking in there walking out. They go, it's going to take them two, three days just to look at you. And then they're going to run this parts and all this shit and take a whole day to run diagnostics that only took an hour. You know what I'm saying? Before you know it, three weeks done went past on a truck that you got a four or five thousand dollar payment on. Put your insurance and all of this shit together. Now you done lost a month. Even if it ain't cost you nothing in the repairs, you see what I'm saying? And then you got renting. Renting, they 
most likely gonna give you a brand new truck, except for what was just happening when trucks was tight during the pandemic. Now, those trucks will have problems, but when the problem arises, they just gonna bring you another truck. So you just keep on bugging. Mm -hmm. And that's the benefit there. But that's yeah. going that's what What about like the leasing part, like you know, five year lease and stuff like that? Like how a person do it do a car. You can do those. Mm -hmm. And they had a maintenance um included and you'll have first right to purchase at the end of the lease. Mm -hmm. And you'll know the truck because you had it since the beginning. Now, but do you, you mean lease on the two? No, 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 not a company like he talking about on the purchase. Just side. like on the purchasing side. Yeah. Okay. I know like some lease, jobs. rent, and 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 purchase. Yeah. Okay. Finance. Right. Yeah. Not 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 leasing like I'm leasing the truck from the company. Okay. Like me going to the dealership and saying like, all right, I want that truck. All right. When 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 you you got kids and all that stuff. No. I'm, no. Uh -uh. You prepared to be out there? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Rent, I mean, go, rent, rent, rent a truck in a trailer, go to a company called Coop. If you go to Ride or Penske, they don't want a $15,000 down payment. It used to be five. When trucks got tight, they raised it. Everything went up. They came down a little bit, but they won't run your credit. Because I had to put five now. What company you went with? Penske. 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 Yeah, yeah. So they came down a little bit. See, Ryder, like, See, Ryder yeah, I'm going to years tight. I just kind of found this out. Penske, if you get a truck from them, I should say you get a fleet on a truck, like Cowan or J.B. Hunt or something like that. You know that those trucks are always maintenance. Right? Not true. And you said not true? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I'm still figuring it out. But also, kind of look well, like they got a maintenance. They got a maintenance let, me, let, me in, let me interject. They got a maintenance let me interject in that. They don't maintenance it how the owner operator would. It would, right. They have scheduled maintenance to the max. They running 25,000 miles before they do a PM. Exactly. On the operator getting the PM out of 10,000 miles. So that's what she's saying, and, and you're right. They go the absolute longest. Why? Because what are they interested in, a truck or right. the bottom line? Right, and they, and, the truck, and they don't keep it down long because the truck got to keep moving. And then you're talking about slip feeding. So I'm fucking the truck up, you fucking the truck up, everybody fucking the truck up. And then it's so fucked up when they get it, it take them a minute to put it back together. Right. Yeah. Now, the benefit to that is when you buy one of them trucks, they got well that, but they also had maintenance records yeah. from birth right. to purchase. And, but I know our own boy went to, uh, I just said the name, uh, Richie Brothers, and bought a pre fleet truck. And it had all the paperwork from beginning to end as well. Well, this is the thing you're not going to get away from maintenance. Yeah. Right. If you buy a brand new truck, you're going to have electrical and sensor issues, which is going to cost more. And they're going to force you to fix it because if you don't, the truck won't derail. And if you delete it, you void the warranty. If you buy an older truck, you can have an issue, but you can run it until you get into a place where you can fix it. New truck, I, I had a truck, I was on my fifth truck with this company. Running purchases. So I'm like, shit, they, they gonna look out for me. I get up there, take one of the trucks home, Boom, but everything's smooth. The second truck I come back for, which is actually the fifth in the line, from the same dealer, the truck didn't even make it home. Truck cut off. All right, they tore it, put it in the shop. Great iron home. Come back. Get down the road, truck cut off again. Same deal, fix it. All right, come back, a couple more weeks, pick it up. Truck cut off. Again, it took me three times to get this truck home. So it's going to be issues, and then what you got to realize, a truck, you, first off, you're dealing with sales, salesperson. A truck is a big boy car dealer. Drivers don't know nothing about truck mechanics. They buying trucks based off of the look. That's why they paint the frame slick black. That's why they put new tires on it. That's why they go buy this cap system and make the tires look slick. You don't need to do it. There are uh, companies out here that polish rims that can make them look like mirrors, mm -hmm. even if they use. How you can do that? Right. 
<laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, so, all right, then that's another thing. I just got a truck paint. I've been, I, I see. I see. Yeah. Right, so I'm looking for um, people. The Mexicans down on Irving? No, I went to, uh, I'm terrible with his name. It's a guy down on Haven Street. I forget his name. I used to pull up to the TA. But see, if he, all of y'all that need drivers and shit in here, y'all need to be putting that out there and not hold y'all stuff in. Because it's potentially an employee in here. So whatever business or whatever you into or side stuff, make it known because it's potential for y'all to make money. Um, I need to. Any more questions? Because uh, I'm going to do this exercise to prove that point that he made earlier. Then we're going to take a bathroom break and then I'm going to knock this out. Hey, you forgot one. My bad, uh, homie. My name is Mike, uh, originally from Delaware. Uh, been in Maryland, originally trying to take a right once back home. So, uh, How long you been down? Five. Where you was at? No teach. Right here. Where you was at? Eastern Shore. Then the uh, ECR, and then here to the Pacific. Um, got my CDL when I came home. And I've been 20 years. Bought my own truck two years ago. Um, well, I followed him on Instagram, but I was like four or five years ago when he was driving around and getting them books out. Yeah. Uh, books, lift up with you, bought one of them. And I'm looking for, I'm, I'm putting this out there, this is something I am asking y'all for. The publisher I was using back then, uh, folded or whatever, doing all this tragedy. So if y'all know any printers, let me know, because that's why I haven't had hard copies in a while. But go ahead. That's about it. I just bought my own truck and leased on somebody. What you leased it? Mercy. Out of Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, I know Mercy. Yeah, I've been with them. Sorry. All right, that's what's up. Anybody I missed? All right, so I'm going to save y'all from having to buy hundreds of books. I mean, y'all seen my live life. I gave most of it away to I did a lot of training. So. I'm saving our man Jesus. He talked earlier about writing the goals and stuff down. I want everybody to take their hands, and if you look on the bottom of your hands, you'll see two lines. Can you line those, both your hands up, even from the bottom, not the top? He good. Let me get his rest. He's been here since before. He was here when I came. <laughs> Now you said it's two lines, I got a few. No, on the bottom of your hand, you got a line. You try to line your hand up even. Like on that red. Oh, you wrist? Yeah. yeah. Now, now put your hand put your hand together. Yeah, I did that. Alright, I'm dead. I got put your hands hand. together like you're trying. I match you. One of your hands is bigger than the other one, ain't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Both, yeah. Both your hands the same size? Yeah. The hand I write with is bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, it's always going to be exceptions to the rule. Everybody not going to get everything, but I want to demonstrate something to y'all. Take your smallest hand. Smallest hand. Okay. And hold it right here. All right. Now, I want you to look directly into the palm of your hand and say "grow" twenty times. We all going to say it together. Grow. 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 Grow, 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 grow. All right, that's enough. Now put your hands back together. I'm gonna look bigger. It look bigger. It is did everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right, so it's a famous book. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Y'all tripping out. <laughs> I'm a physician, y'all. I hypnotize people. I brought y'all here to be hypnotized, so I can send y'all out to be my driver. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm joking. But on the real tip, there's a, there's a famous book out here. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That was his third book. His first book was... The Law of Success of 16 Lessons. He followed all the richest men in the world. His mentor, which you keep talking about, was the richest man in the world at the time, Andrew Carnegie. 
He said he wanted to give away all his money, but if I did it and gave it to people who didn't know what to do with it, it would cause more harm than good. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to create a philosophy that the common man could use to achieve wealth or success, whichever idea that is to that person. So he sent Napoleon Hill to follow all the richest men in the world for 20 years, then he wrote his first book, The Law of Success. Then three years later, uh, well, three books later, he wrote Think and Grow Rich. What's up, homie? Hey, how you doing, boss? All uh, right, you just missed the magic trick, yeah, it's man. That's cool, man. I'm just getting off work, man. It's so all I, just, good. I just want to stop in. No, nah, that's cool. It's, I appreciate you. You're a blessing to me. Um, y'all And y'all are helping me as well because you allowed me to see in the physical that I'm not doing this for nothing. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of money to reach out. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm, I'm saying that y'all got kids and you buy them stuff and they don't really, they really want something you buy and they don't understand the sacrifice you made to get them this gift. Y'all yeah. 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 truly don't understand all I go through in order for just today to happen because it took me years of investing money, time, and energy in the people in order for today to happen. So I really put a lot into this. But the point I was getting at, Mr. Bowie, when I came home, I saw him downtown. He said, think and grow rich. Mm -hmm. He saw I was uh, going to school at the time. Mm -hmm. I went and bought it. Uh, then I went through the South Help Chitlin Circuit, which I'm saving y'all from going through, spending tens of thousands of dollars. Then I found out that all of these people were taking the information from Napoleon Hill and remixing it and making their own books. Yeah. So I figured I'd just buy all of his books. And that's what I did. I read his whole entire collection. Then, because I'm an extremist, which is why I don't break love, because I continuously get in trouble, because I don't know the limits. I went and got trained by them. I was the only young black man in there with people from Australia, the Congo, everywhere, at a location that we couldn't even get phone service in. And you can sum all of that stuff up in Bible terms. As a man thinking, so speak over yourself. Mm -hmm. Find out what you want. Write it down physically, not type. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we're going through a program right now called um, Your Wishes and yeah. Command by Kevin Trudeau. Um, right. 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 Read your goal every morning, multiple times, mm -hmm. out loud. With emotion, you want to be, all right, your body is an instrument, okay? So they got this book called The Secret. It's a documentary, all this stuff, but they're not telling y'all the whole secret. So your mind is a magnet, but it works two ways. When you think, you're sending out signals, but what brings them back is your feelings, your emotions. Explain to me how... A poor family can come up with three, four thousand dollars overnight to bear their grandson home. Emotions, you emotionally invested. When you want something bad enough that you'll do anything to get it, it's almost sure to happen. That, uh, I mean, imagine the strength if your child was underneath of a car, how much strength you could just muster up at that moment. You're emotionally tied to it. Mm -hmm. Most people give up because they're not really emotionally tied to it. But to make all that short, your mind is a, is a magnet. You are a magnet. Your mind sends out the signal. Your emotions reel them in. Okay, if you want to get biblical with it, what they say in church, if the prayers go up, blessings come down. Mm -hmm. Am I lying? No. I just demonstrated y'all with your hand and start speaking your goals into your life so you can have me and do what you want to do. And we're going to take a break. Y'all can meet, let's give it a half an hour, we're gonna come back and dive straight into this. And then anything I don't understand, we're gonna have questions all the way up until whenever y'all feel like leaving. The next session don't start until three. I sacrifice a day for y'all to understand what I'm doing. And if there's anybody that wanna stay for the next session, y'all can. It's gonna be more people here on these things. Just give them the same respect that y'all was given and leave out and allow them to come in so they can sit down and y'all more than welcome to stay. There's more seats in the back but there's no more tables. Check it out. Bring it. No. Oh, okay. Oh, no. They probably cut off.